Hey everybody, welcome back to On the Couch with David and Travis. Now that wasn't very enthusiastic. That was. It was... Welcome back to On the Couch with David and Travis. I'm not Laura Linney, okay? That's the problem. Uh, today we're uh, going to be talking about the episode called The Storm. It was a fantastic episode. I liked it a lot. And again, this is I say this every time, but it's so tight how much they fit in this short episode period. Mm -hmm. So at times it feels like it's a little too fast paced. Especially like with it's sort of like Zugo, don't talk at this meeting and the next sentence is him talking at the meeting. Yeah. But that's really that's a, a result of format. They don't have a choice with that. I well it's really a, an amazing achievement what they did, because it made it seem like a very short episode. Mm -hmm. And it was basically all plot. Yeah. You know, it was all, like, talking about what happened before, what's happening now. But it's all interesting. Yeah, and it's all interesting, and they do it by splitting it up, going back and forth between mm -hmm. the two. It also further strengthens that link between the two guys. And using a storm as the framing device is really cool, because they both got caught up in it. And they had that great moment at the end where they were in the eye of the storm, and they both just sort of look at each other. Yeah. And, like, I don't exactly know what that's supposed to mean. I just, I sort of interpret it as them for a moment sort of being like, maybe he's more like me than I think. And that feels a little obvious. Maybe there's something else, but... Well, it's really f interesting because Katara, at the end, with um, Aang, is like, you give people hope. And then Zuko, the Uncle Avatar Iroh says, oh, the Avatar gives him hope. That's and good. that's like a unique, that's like a twist on what Katara is saying. That's, that's you know, good. No, it's just really cool. And then there's also sort of the aspect where she says, okay, you need to move on from the past, but Zuko isn't at that point yet. He can't yeah. do that. And that's his downfall. And that's what's so great about this show is really a big part of it is the villain. And that's Zuko. Mm -hmm. I, I see his time with him again. You need to have a villain that is as interesting, if not more interesting, than your protagonist. I agree. I don't like it, though, when the protagonist is boring. It, I mean, you get a lot with superhero movies mm -hmm. where the villain's like, oh, he gets to be cool and creepy, and then the good guy's the good guy. It doesn't work either. Loki's a friggin' nerd. I don't. I like, know, exactly. I don't like Loki either. He's not interesting. Oh, the internet's not going to like you, Travis. I know. They, they're in... I don't like Loki either. I think he's annoying, and I don't like Tom You can have a, You take boring dialogue, and you give it a creepy smile and hairdo. That doesn't make it interesting. That's, it's but he still... has, like, those horn <laughs> things. It's still boring. It's still boring. These are, like, Aang and Zuko... Our main character and our main villain, really, are much more interesting. Actually, I wouldn't even characterize Zuko as a villain. He is... Well, he's but supposed to be only because of the story. And that's what's perfect, is you need a villain where, in their own story, they would be the protagonist. They'd be the exactly. hero. Exactly. Because you can see, oh, this is why he does what he needs to do. This is his reasoning. He, he's not just wants the Avatar to die. He wants it because he thinks, falsely, which makes it even more impactful, he thinks that that will redeem him. But we when, know it won't. When we know that really his dad didn't really like him from the beginning. He's, the dad, you know, he's probably not on his dad's, dad's mind the at worst. all. Yeah. His dad's the worst. And they, yeah, war, we have so. two huge backstories. And it works because we've sort of scraped the surface on both of these a little. We had that episode of the Air Temple where we saw a little bit of Aang's. We've talked about Zuko. So it wasn't just throwing all this stuff at us for the first time. Exactly. And it didn't go that deep, but it went about as deep as you can go in a 22-minute kids cartoon. Yeah, exactly. Thematically, it's it's such a well-structured episode, and this is what really puts it beyond your other classic, like... And obviously, there's been some really great episodes before this, but this is where it's like, there's symbolism, there's theme, there's characterization, there's, like, dialogue. There's action. You, yeah. It's like... Everything works together so well here. And there's some good humorous moments, too. It has yeah. everything. Yeah. And it's like, th it's like this is a step above, like, just, like, intellectually, it's a step above anything you'll see. I mean, it's not my favorite episode. Not my personal no. favorite. No. But I mean, even my personal favorite episode, we'll get to it. It's one that I don't even think a lot of people like that much. But I think it's like, and I know you don't really believe in this, but I think it's like a 10 out of 10 episode. There's, when I think 10 out of 10, I think there's nothing you could really do to fix it. And, and um, I, I don't like the rankings just because I feel like so much of it is arbitrary. Well, I'm not trying to say it's a perfect one, but that's no, the no, best no. way to I know say it. Yeah, I know of, what you mean, though. Because yeah. 10 out of 10 isn't perfect. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, just coming at it from a teacher perspective, like, if you get 100% on an assignment, that means you achieved everything that you were supposed yeah, exactly, to achieve, but exactly. you can still push it more. And here, like, obviously, they could 
push something like but then it would be a different show the thing that always you know comes I mean? to mind for me with this is the incredibles it's not my favorite movie it's not the best movie ever made but i couldn't tell you a single thing i think is wrong with that movie or they could have fixed it yeah. has everything you could want and more and it just does it pretty like, much this expertly. is a perfect avatar episode yes yes which that's, is, that's the per that's the best way to put it yeah and that's not not to say like it's worse like say like than a really like, I don't want to say, like, Breaking Bad, but, you, you know, Yeah, but that's what you could say. It's, like, they're two... It's apples they're different things. Yeah. They're different things. So it's, like, a perfect Breaking Bad episode and a perfect Avatar episode is different. Mm -hmm. But they're both achieved... You have different expectations. They achieve... Them, they're in the upper echelons of their series. It's even, like, saying, like, a, like a perfect YouTube video or, like, a perfect uh, commercial. You could say that. They're just so different. You can't really compare them. It's almost, like... I mean, even two shows, it's almost, like, two different mediums. It, it, uh, well, it is. Mm -hmm. Two different audiences... Two different storytelling methods. You know, it's like, it's completely different. What I really like is they're getting into the unconventional storytelling methods now. Mm -hmm. And I know I've seen some episodes yep, absolutely. in the Earth book where that becomes a big thing. And again, that's what pushes Avatar above so Playing with other. format is... I mean, it's you shouldn't do it arbitrarily. No. But when you do it well, it's good. But like the Appa episode, like that is very purposeful. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. Oh, I like that episode I mean, a lot. You like animals and... The, and the Bossing Say Story episodes, like, that is for a reason. I don't think it's... A, well, well, we'll get there. Travis doesn't like it. Well, I, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get there. Whatever. But what I'm saying is, when they... when At least so far, and from what I've seen of those three episodes, I feel like there's been a purpose behind the format change. And I think this really is the high point of book one. Because I don't think it really is goes this far again in book one. Mm -hmm. I think they get more confident with books two and three what they're doing, but this is really their sort of... And even then, it's not that out there. It's not that experimental. No. But it's them for Nickelodeon, for a kid show, doing as much as they can. And really, like, trusting their audience enough to be to make sure that they can follow everything. Because there are some really quick transitions between the stories. Mm -hmm. And, like, for some kids, like, that's trusting them a lot to be able to, for themselves, like, really paying attention. But that's important because you need to trust, you need to respect, you need to challenge children exactly. with these sort of exactly. entertainments. So it's good. I mean, you would understand that more than ever. Yeah. Well, yeah. So much is why I really like it. I think, like, literally as I talk about it more, the more I like it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I, it's really a high point of the series so far mm -hmm. is this one. And it's really good. I, uh, I'm trying to think, like, because... I mean, I guess it's kind of like a sadder one, but I, there's really no real sad things in Avatar, I don't think. I don't think there's anything in Avatar that would make me cry. No. We'll see. It's it all like, it's sad. I, it's but sad, it's not, but it's not, it's not like... like it's not like I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling it in my gut. Yeah. No. It doesn't depress your emotions, yeah. you know what I mean? Which is fine. Because that's what it, it is what it is. It's I Avatar. think we're at least... We're, if we're not past it, we're at the halfway point. It's either 24 or less. It has to be less than 24. I, I think. think it's 22. Yeah. So I've worked past the halfway point, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. Again, I think I can pretty commonly say the book one, Water, is the weakest one, but this is the high point of that, and this yeah. shows that there's merit very much even so to this first season entry. Yeah. And really, the weakest episodes we've seen so far, still better than most of what you get on us. Yeah, it's on better like, than, and you can mark me down on this, it's better than Steven Universe. I hate that show. Well, like, other, like really famous animated shows like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. And well, I mean, those, you know, those I mean, those aren't very good shows, though. Exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Avatar is different. But, I mean, though, they, like, Avatar is sort of after that. I feel like it's not a fair comparison. Well, what would be a fair comparison? What else is on Nickelodeon? Well, Netflix we were talking time? about, I think, well, on Nickelodeon, I think Teen Titans was on Cartoon Network, which was sort of in the same vein. Yeah. I wouldn't say one is better or worse than the other. I really um, like Teen Titans. That'd be a fun one. To do. Yeah, I really like it. Robin on Teen Titans was in an episode. Yeah. I heard his voice. Um, I don't know Disney better than what uh, Disney just started having good animated shows again because I mean they they this would I think Sweet Life of Zack and Cody or something would have been on this. Yeah. I can tell you what I would have picked between. I don't. I do like that so Raven. Kim Possible is pretty good. I mean, it's not. It's no Avatar. It's not Avatar. Avatar no. but it's good. All right, we were next up episode twelve. Thirteen. This Thirteen. Was fun. You're uh, bad so at keeping track of this. I, I, I don't know. We're taking a break, so I don't know what's next. I don't have the yeah, TV on, but we'll figure it out then. I'm gonna go get some covers, and I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.